So yes, first, a big welcome to our another session of Seven Realities Meditation and Reading of Discourses and Meditation for New Humanity, along with Baba's Namja. So what I was saying is that this uh, week has been very conscious decluttering after a very long time. And uh, it, it reminded me of Baba's quote of... Uh, there's some noise behind somebody. If you all can mute some camera. So uh, this statement, uh, it is a small excerpt also in Meher Baba calling, where he says of how to empty our hearts of everyone and only have the beloved. When you have outsiders and outsiders just, uh, for me, that outsiders meant a lot of clutter of things that have just finished and are to be closed and are to be left behind. And uh, we are just kind of having it all around us because we've not got the time to move it away or move away from it. And uh, being, uh, you know, that stagnating energy of sorts was very strong in this week. That uh, there's a lot of heaviness around me kind of feeling. So I just, uh, you know, uh, kind of deleted a lot of groups from WhatsApp, uh, that had served its purpose and were finished with. I exited a lot of groups where I don't have much contribution to. And uh, yes, it was it was quite a great feeling. It, it actually seemed lighter after doing that and realized that how important this regular decluttering is. So I've put it in my alarm now. Every once in two months, I'm going to declutter messages. I'm going to declutter the email box and so on <laughs> because we don't realize but all of this takes energy and weighs us down unconsciously and it plays an important role when cluttered in the mind or clutter around us and just like silence where baba says external silence helps internal silence i felt external decluttering helps internal decluttering as well so that was a new learning <laughs> It was think, there. Sorry, um, yes. sorry, Rashi. Yes, I was going to say, I think this is just for me, but it's not just, I did actually delete quite a few emails, but I didn't go as far as you, but it's the external outside of the computer. I, uh, and I, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, I'm at the same college as Sanaba of, you know, <laughs> procrastination. I've been sitting, you know, with clutter that I need to clear of stuff that I love, but I think it was from my husband's and my life together around the world. And it's been, that's my excuse anyway. I haven't got around to it, but I am determined to start doing it even in small ways. So thank you for that. Your, anything you can do to encourage or any messages of support, I'd appreciate. Sure. I, I think that putting an alarm on our clock for very, uh, you know, important things, like even we're meeting Sunday to Sunday, but I would really love if uh, you're doing anything out of the workbook at a daily level, because that is going to really, you know, help us individually. So there is one thing that we do, which is like a big thing, and we feel the aha moment in that point in time. But the work that we are doing is to actually engage with Baba on a daily level. And therefore, the breathing meditation part, uh, which is there in the workbook, if all of you do it every day, it'll help a lot. It gives me a lot of clarity as well each day. And uh, besides that, putting an alarm of uh, decluttering once a month, at least, I have consciously cut down my WhatsApp time. I don't see my WhatsApp all the time that earlier because I had this thing, oh, some student is messaging, somebody is messaging, somebody needs help. And this is, I said, okay, everybody has things, everything he's taking care of. Even if I don't see the WhatsApp, whoever has to be taken care of will be taken care of because I'm never the doer. So then there was no need for me to have that little flutter in my heart. And I consciously just maybe two to three times max in the day. My day ends like four or five in the morning after I finish work. So I just take it by that and come what may. I, however tempted, I will refrain from checking my phone. So little, little these disciplines and obviously asking his grace to discipline has helped a lot. So I, I put it in the alarm, decluttering day. I put it in the alarm, uh, do not check WhatsApp. Like it'll just spring up 
So I put as an everyday alarm, along with my silence alarm or, you know, things like that. So that has been very uh, helpful. The alarm uh, app is very, very helpful in our phones if we utilize it for all the right things. And uh, yes, so maybe you could try that and uh, it'll really help. I felt a lot of weight out after I deleted messages, groups, and a whole lot of things, and my emails, and uh, clearing. I just stepped out of two other things which were there, which were just taking in, and I felt guided that I had to step out. So with all his love, I shared with the people concerned that I need to step back, and I don't think this is what, you know, I was game for. And my role play is over, and... So focusing and prioritizing somewhere, you know, doing a lot of things constantly, it gets blurred. So I had to kind of, he had to give me a little kick and I had to come back to doing that of, no, I do not need to spread my energy thin and I need to focus and prioritize on what I feel internally, what Baba truly wants me to do and contribute my energy to all of that. So it's been a great feeling. Hey, Lenita, Jai Baba, Margie Pen, Sita. Hey. Oh, I'm right here. Jai Baba, Mona, Jai Baba. Jai Baba, Rosh. Lovely to see you all. So like every time, we will be uh, beginning in a few minutes. We'll begin with our Meher Baba chant where we will chant Baba's name 21 times. After that, we will move into the meditation. Today is the longer version of the meditation, the main meditation. Last time we did the breathing meditation, right? Or did we do the long? The long one we did? Okay. I, okay. I always, we did the long one. What about anybody? We else? did the long one. We did long, the long okay. one. So today the breathing one we will be doing. And after that, as you soak in your inner silence some more time with Baba, I will read one page of discourses and one page from Meditation for New Humanity. And then we'll open up for a little discussion. And if we have time, we'll do one chant as well. All right. Good morning, Gail. Che Baba. Roshni, I wanted to share one thing, please. Please, uh, please. Uh, this is actually directed to Seppi. Because uh, Seppi had once in her calls said that she even asks for help from Dr. Goher, which really struck a chord. And I did that this week. And I have to really thank you for that guidance. Because there's echo. There's Sorry. echo coming. Can you hear me now? Uh, yeah. Is it better? Yeah. Are two instruments yeah. on or anything? Have you logged in for something else? No. Okay. But there uh, is echo shall I from disconnect? the headset. Yeah. yeah. No, just remove the headset and try to speak without the headset. How about... Yeah. Better? Much better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry. <laughs> so, Seppi, thank you because you uh, mentioned that you called uh, in your work because you work in a clinic. And uh, that really helped me this week. I needed that kind of help for uh, a parent. And um, it really helped a lot. Thank you. You're very welcome, Sanaba, very welcome. And it reminds me too, to take my own advice of what I've done. <laughs> Is there are a few little things and I would need Dr. O'Hare for at the moment. So <laughs> reminding my, me of my own, my own suggestions. Sanabar, you could check your audio settings. If your speaker yeah. and microphone, or uh, what are they? Like same as system or what is written there? You could check. Uh, maybe. I'm, on, I'm on an Android phone. So what do okay. I have to do? Okay. Uh, no problem. Then I don't know what uh, could be the cause of this. I'll disconnect and reconnect. Okay, quickly do that. I think everyone's mute. That's why, maybe. Just wanted to uh, hear, Roshni, what was that? Uh, I couldn't understand what uh, Sanoba was talking about. 
uh, Sanabar was referring to something that Seppi had mentioned a few sessions back and something connected that she was talking about to Seppi. Seppi, you would like to explain? I think I think I was just saying that you know we were talking. I think I don't whether it was on here or another another where, you know time. But um, yeah. how, with the Mandali, I feel a connection with each one of them in my heart, both the male and but the women in particular. Because oh, I think it was on our there's a mirror tea group that um, I'm I go I'm a part of, and um, I've often turned to Dr. Gohair if it's a medical and and an emotional situation with her because she was just so sensitive and such a phenomenal doctor and also I don't know Eric feels like a real safe person so if I'm scared of anything I feel like he's a strength. So obviously I turn to Bubba all the time, but sometimes I think he might you know I'm like. So I just I just cover all all bases, and sometimes I even say the entire company of heaven. So uh, that has helped me in the past. So I just I just think each one, and obviously Mira, Mira for many many things, and Mani for her lovely sense of humor, and all of uh, uh, you know Bauji for those. I I didn't meet Bauji, so I didn't you know I didn't have the connection that Roshni has I did meet Meru but that's the only Mandali that I met in person but I think we can have our really strong connections internally in our hearts and we don't need to have met them you know I have this uh, very funny thing where obviously besides Bhauji I've not met anyone and uh, not really felt uh, any closeness as such besides with two but uh, not the sec so one is Bal Natuji I feel very very connected with and somehow and uh, then Alo Bhaji but actually it was the other way around so once an uh, old Baba lover auntie uh, saw in uh, her dreams that uh, she was not able to come for our satsangs for very long and she saw in the dream that i've got this big new house and i've invited everyone for the home housewarming baba satsang over there and it's in midst of these hills and river going by and she almost doesn't know where she is and when she enters uh, that home she asks is this roshni's home so that person says yes but there is no no chappals or shoes outside that is expected that you know people People are going to come so she's wondering whether it really is my place so uh, nonetheless she uh, tries to go up and as she goes up there's this for it's like these old houses which had you know these bungalow type which are uh, two leveled three leveled houses so uh, she says that she goes up and on the first floor uh, where this main hall supposedly where the satsang is going she's the first one to arrive and the first thing that uh, she hits upon is a big frame of alobaji so she's saying, how come Alobaji's big frame and where is Baba's big frame? So then she sees on the right hand side mural, it's completely, you know, with Baba's painting or something, a wall mural of Baba is there. And she's asking uh, Alobaji, what are you doing here, Aloba, uh, you know, in such a big frame? And Aloba, uh, apparently in the dream, tells her from the photo frame that Baba has appointed me to look after Roshni and to make sure to be there for all the Baba work that she has to do. And this was this was completely uncanny because I have never collected, connected to Alobaji or never have any sort of connection, you know, uh, before that. And to the least that I didn't even know how Alobaji looked. I had till then, it was 2016 almost i 2014 sorry i had only uh, met bhauji i had seen erich's photograph mani's photograph and mehra's photograph besides these four i had not even seen anybody's photograph and i'm saying oh why did you see alobaji like you know why would baba put alobaji there and then suddenly this very you know plump uh, face comes to my uh, mind and i go on search and there are several pictures of alobaji and I uh, I save one of those pictures, some 20, 30 pictures of different, different, you know, things were there. And I pick out this one picture and I send to auntie and I say, was this picture in the frame? And she says, yes, this big picture was right in the frame. And so after that, I had a little connect uh, sporadically with Alobaji as well, not as much. But uh, Bhauji has been the strongest and then Nehra, but of course, but and then Balnatu. So, yeah.
Baba breathes in such funny ways sometimes. <laughs> Great. I also so connect with Balna too. I find his writings are how I talk to Baba. For, you know, it's very <laughs> familiar. And uh, so I'm kind of relieved because I think sometimes I'm a bit irreverent in the way I <laughs> chatter on and about inconsequential and different things. And Balnatu's style is similar. So that made me feel a bit better when I read some of his books. That, that made me feel the same, Seppi. It gave me comfort that there is this, uh, you know, very, uh, very homely relationship with Baba. And uh, even though the heart, the soul, the back of the mind knows he is God. And of course, he is for that heart inside. It is, you know, how Baba takes us all as our children. And irrespective of uh, us addressing him in a way or not, has got nothing to do. I remember when the first series of Love and Live God was made, there was somebody who had written in the comments, how dare you try to talk about Baba's quotes and demean the highest of the high. And my just loving reply was, if we think that our talking or sharing or saying anything is going to shift his position, then we don't know who he is. And that ends it. If I as a mortal and my discussion can change his status as highest of the high, then I don't know who he is. And if I know who he is, then whatever that I'm talking and speaking, he himself has said he's the ocean and he takes the garlands and the roses and the garbage and the coconuts and everything. So uh, that gave me strength to speak up. Uh, I was very new again at that time, but it, his love gave me the strength to speak that there is nobody. We think we protect God. We protect his legacy. We protect his work. We protect his work. Who the hell are we? He protects us. He gives us the opportunity to be custodians of that for that period of holiday that we have come on earth. Who are we to protect him or his legacy or his words or his work or his clothes or anything? And it is he giving that opportunity to us. And it goes for any thought so ever I've felt of doing, you know, Baba's work. There's no Baba's work. You know, we are doing it for ourselves because it gives us peace and he's allowing it. He's allowing us to be involved in doing these little knickknacks in life that please us that, oh, I'm doing work for Baba. Baba does his own work and he makes everybody else do it as well. So I guess uh, this thought, if at all it comes any time, needs to be removed. And I have kept on, uh, you know, in earlier times, if it did come that, oh, why did this person say like this? And is said, no, it's not. Baba is giving this opportunity. And Baba is doing his own work by giving this opportunity. And uh, thereby then it doesn't matter because it doesn't matter to Baba. So if it doesn't matter to Baba what he or she is saying, how should it matter to me? And that gave a lot of strength to extract myself from any drama that people created around me or any drama that tried to create itself within me. So with that, yes, Seppi. Yeah, Mona, you wanted to ask something? Sorry, do you want to go first? No, I'll yes. Just go, I'll just say, I think within the Baba Lover community as well, there are many beads on one string. And there's no right or wrong way. I know I keep saying this over and over again, but I think it's really important because some people get, oh, you shouldn't say that you hear Baba or you don't hear Baba. We all hear him and hear or see or feel or intuit him in different ways and no way is right, no way is wrong. Absolutely. And I think he's the big pa the parent. So of course he wants to know the nitty gritty of, you know, I don't know little things in life he, he he wants us to receive his love and to be the guidance in, even with the smallest little what we think a petty thing should i bother him about a parking space you know whatever it might be um but i think he delights in that as we as parents would you know they help that you help your children through everything little things and big things and and, and but do your best not to not to control them yes yes absolutely so true and uh, all right, so with that, we'll begin our chant, Jai Baba Jeff.
music. Is the music audible? Please close your eyes. It's a comfortable position. Is the sound coming to you all? Yes, but it's staticky. Okay. It's uh, fading in and out, Roshni. Okay. Now is it clearer? Close your eyes, sit in a comfortable position and take your mind's eye after complete relaxation from your head to your door, to your heart center in the center of your chest. Try to see, feel or imagine or intent. Baba's beautiful image right there. And as you see Baba's image, take a few deep breaths to get calmer in your entire system, allowing your external thoughts to fade out into oblivion. Keep focusing more and more on Baba's image. We shall now chant Baba's name 21 times. Meher Baba, Meher Baba, Meher Baba, Meher Baba, Meher Baba, Meher Baba. Meher Baba. Meher Baba 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 Take a deep breath and remain in your inner silence as we shift into the meditation. Namaste, Jai 
Baba everyone. This is Roshni Shams. Welcome to the daily breathing meditation based on the seven realities by Avtar Meher Baba. In our fast-paced lives, this meditation will help us in a short span of time to infuse the power of God's love. Helping us to live the seven realities in everyday life. You shall now sit in a relaxed position. Be comfortable. You may sit cross-legged. Put your feet on the ground sitting on a chair. Or lie down. And as you sit in this comfortable position, bring your hands into the Chin Mudra or the Gyan Mudra. Touching the pad of your thumb to the tip of your index finger. Keep both the hands rested on your knees over the lap. Or a little away from the knees on your thighs. Whichever is comfortable for you. We will first begin with relaxing right from the head to your toes. Loosen up your head, your neck, your shoulders, your arms, your back, your chest. your stomach, your legs, feet and your toes and every part, cell of your mind, body and spirit be completely relaxed in God's love. We will now take seven deep breaths with the word Baba. With every inhale you will say in your mind Ba and with every exhale you will say Ba. Take a deep breath, inhale Ba. Exhale Ba. Inhale, ba. Exhale, 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 ba. 
इनहेल बाहेल बा And as you take these deep exhales, we will now move on to imprinting each of the realities in each of the energy centers, our chakras. You will take your mind's eye and focus first to the bottom of your spinal area. to the root chakra and imagine a red ball of light and as you imagine this repeat after me i imprint real existence in the root chakra Take a deep breath as we move on to the next chakra You will now imagine an orange ball of light three fingers below your navel area which is your sacral chakra and repeat after me i imprint real love in the sacral chakra take a deep cleansing breath Every breath you take keep inhaling and exhaling with the word ba ba We now move on to the third reality Take your mind's eye or focus to the center of your upper abdominal area just below the rib cage and imagine a golden yellow ball of light and repeat after me i imprint real sacrifice in the solar plexus chakra take a deep cleansing breath As we move on to the fourth reality imagine and take your mind's eye to the center of your chest area and see an emerald green ball of light rotating there repeat after me i imprint real renunciation in the heart chakra take a deep cleansing breath as we move to the fifth reality Take your mind's eye and intention to the center of your lower throat area and imagine a light blue ball of light rotating there. Repeat after me. I imprint real knowledge 
in the throat chakra Take a deep breath as we move to the sixth reality. Shift your mind's eye to the center of your forehead area above the eyebrows. And imagine an indigo blue ball of light which is the third eye chakra. Repeat after me I imprint real control in the third eye chakra And as you do that Take another deep breath with power. Wow. As we move to the seventh reality. Take your mind's eye and intention to the center of the top area in your head. And imagine a royal purple ball of light rotating there. which is your crown chakra and repeat after me i imprint real surrender in the crown chakra And as you take a deep breath with the seventh reality bring your mind's eye or focus back to the root chakra and imagine the red ball of light We shall now progressively move upwards with each chakra and inhale and exhale Baba's name into it to seal the imprints of all the seven realities into your being Imagine the root chakra inhale ba Exhale ba Imagine the sacral chakra Inhale ba Exhale ba Move to the solar plexus chakra Inhale ba Exhale ba Move to the heart chakra Inhale ba Exhale ba Move to the throat chakra Inhale ba Exhale ba to the third eye chakra inhale ba exhale ba move to the crown chakra inhale ba exhale ba and as you complete 
They inhale and exhale with each chakra and each reality. Imagine all the chakras and the seven realities aligned in one single line along your spinal area from the root to the crown chakra from the red orange golden yellow emerald green light blue indigo blue to the royal purple all aligned on top of each other vibrating at their highest intensity and vibrations and as all of them get aligned all the beautiful seven colors of the energy centers converge to become a white beam of shining light vibrating and throbbing through your spinal area as you seal into your entire consciousness and every layer of this consciousness and your being with the seven realities feel yourself now filled with this shimmering white light in your entire body may every nook and corner of your mind body and spirit be infused with baba's love with god's will mercy compassion and forgiveness may all that is of the least intensity of god be released and transmuted into his love and light forever and ever and as this complete sealing of all the seven realities takes place through your being you shall now radiate this love this compassion this wisdom of all the seven realities into your daily life to put them into practice into your living space may baba's love assist you through this path to love and live god in everyday life to live his words and make these words the precept of our lives to be a shining example of god's love in all that you think speak and do in his love and light love and light love and light we thank baba and all his divine forces of love for facilitating this process i thank your soul for participating you shall slowly at the count of 10 do as instructed 10985432 bring your palms next to each other and rub them to create significant warmth between them and put them onto your eyes and feel that warmth permeating you entirely
Slowly move your palms away and slightly shake them on the sides to release any residual energies of any toxins and anything that is unserving and the least intensity of God. May it all be released into His love and light forever and ever. And on one, you shall slowly open your eyes. This is Roshni Shanaz. In Baba's love and light, Jai Baba to all of you. Avatar Meher Baba ki Jai. Avatar Meher Baba ki Jai. Avatar Meher Baba ki Jai. Jai Meher Baba everyone. Uh, today's reading is the first part of the first volume of Discourses, which is the seven realities of Meher Baba's teaching. This is the part which actually intrigued uh, and was going on uh, in my mind in 2013 when this meditation came about, the longer version that we do. That there has to be a very, very special reason that this is the first thing that Baba has put in discourses. And as shared earlier also, as reading through one found uh, I realized that somewhere the entire discourses was an expansion of these seven realities. And Baba had almost like elucidated each and every reality in such a beautiful, you know, a deeper process for us to kind of uh, digest, assimilate and make it a part of our daily life. So I'll read. The seven realities of Meher Baba's teaching, existence, love, sacrifice, renunciation, knowledge, control, and surrender. Meher Baba's teaching gives no importance to creed, dogma, caste, or the performance of religious ceremonies and rites, but does to the understanding of the following seven realities. One. The only real existence is that of the one and only God who is the self in every bracket finite self. Two, the only real love is the love for this infinity in bracket God, which arouses an intense longing to see, know and become one with its truth, bracket, God. Number three, the only real sacrifice is that in which, in pursuance of this love, all things, body, mind, position, welfare, and even life itself are sacrificed. Number four, the only real renunciation is that which abandons, even in the midst of worldly duties, all selfish thoughts and desires. Number five, the only real knowledge is the knowledge that God is the inner dweller in good people and in so-called bad, 
in saint and in so called sinner this knowledge requires you to help all equally as circumstances demand without expectation of reward and when compelled to take part in a dispute to act without the slightest trace of enmity or hatred to try to make others happy with brotherly or sisterly feeling for each one and to harm no one in thought word or deed not even those who harm you number 6 the only real control is the discipline of the senses to abstain from indulgence in low desires which alone ensures absolute purity of character number 7 the only real surrender is that in which poise is undisturbed by any adverse circumstance and the individual amidst every kind of hardship is resigned with perfect calm to the will of god avtar meher baba ki jai i will now read one page from our book meditation for a new humanity it helps us to see consciously the negative aspects of our ego and work to disidentify from them and that begins with letting go of control by the false self and tapping into our real self which is one with ultimate reality itself dash the goal of all spiritual practice as meher baba emphasizes the intensity of meditation is in proportion to the longing for the god for the goal apologies every hour every minute one must crave for god as a drowning man craves for life may this book awaken the seeker to a deeper awareness of the reality of god within each one of us one small note about the discourses readers will notice the usage of masculine nouns and pronouns to denote both men and women meher baba's teachings were not intended to convey a male bias and elsewhere he has clearly stated since male and female incarnations are equally necessary for self knowledge it is not right to look upon one as being more important than the other nonetheless in order to keep alterations to a minimum and for the sake of historical accuracy it was decided to retain the language conventions of the time in which these writings were first prepared avtar meher baba ki jai the last time the page that we read let us meditate upon that sentence and expression of that internal meditation once again today for a few moments we will say it nine times i am part of the infinite and the infinite god is within me so we can close eyes and we will chant this sentence this expression nine times jai baba take a deep breath i am part of the infinite and the infinite god is within me try to feel the words i am part of the infinite and the infinite god is within me i am part of the infinite and the infinite god is within me 
I am part of the infinite and the infinite God is within me. I am part of the infinite and the infinite God is within me. I am part of the infinite and the infinite God is within me. I am part of the infinite and the infinite God is within me. I am part of the infinite and the infinite God is within me. I am part of the infinite and the infinite God is within me. Take three deep breaths with Baba's name. Inhale Ba and exhale Ba. And then you can open your eyes. So would anyone like to share anything that you have been experiencing regarding any of the realities? And if that reality has kind of emphasized itself in your life in the recent past or what it means to you or what you are kind of connecting with within the words of that reality, anything. Who would like to go first? Jai Baba Richard, good to see you. Who would like to begin? Yes, Seppi, thank you. I didn't mean to begin because I've been talking quite a bit, so I'd love to hear from somebody else, but I, I can share something later if you want me to. So who else? Jeff, Lenita, Sanobar, Gail, Marjipan. Yes, Lenita, thank you. Uh, Jay Baba, everyone. As this meditation is such a beautiful thing, you know, and very uh, important for me, I just realized that I have some fear that comes with. I, I, feel, I don't know what it is exactly, but it's a fear to imprint this realities in my body. It's, it's just, it's scare for me. I realized that today. And I, kind, I have some resistance to deeply imprint them in my chakras, in my body. It's a big, it's, it's a huge deal for me to do this. I don't know if I'm not ready for that. I don't know if, uh, if it's just normal to be scared or have fear about this. But uh, the more deep it goes, it's, I'm, I'm just, I'm scared. You know, I get scared, I get scared. <laughs> Holding you tight, Lenita. Thank you. Thank you for your intimate sharing. Thank you. Holding you tight in his love. So, ask a question. Okay, you can do it right now. What is this fear connected to? Is it connected to not being able to live up to Baba's expectations? Is it connected to not living up to these realities and thereby not pleasing Baba? Or is it connected to something else going on in your life? 
ask what is it connected to where is this fear coming from just close your eyes and ask baba to surface you the words one word keyword of where this fear is coming why am i fearing to imprint these seven realities into my system baba <laughs> Sometimes I feel that I don't deserve this, you know. No. I don't deserve to have this in me because I don't know how to live in this. No, my darling. I I, to, I to think first it. pray to Baba to release judgments about yourself. <laughs> The very fact that his, as Baba says, we. are the fortunate ones on whose ears his name has fallen and in these 100 years of manifestation the fortunate ones who will just hear about baba has had connections with the avatar since earlier advents as well now if we were not deserving how would we even hear of baba if we were supposed to be the mass or the general part of the universe to know him when he is proclaimed or when he is universally known as the avatar or anything of that sort and not in this intimate circle of the 100 years of his manifestation so when he has thought us to be deserving how can we judge ourselves and feel that i am not deserving of baba's love <laughs> <laughs> so give that judgment to him and his love will melt away everything tanita and that reality god is the inner dweller in the good people and the so called bad in the saint and in the sinner there is nothing big or small there is no saint or sinner and king or pauper in his eyes there is nobody deserving or more deserving and undeserving in his eyes the very fact that we are sharing this space of love the very fact that we have been involved right from day one and even the others who keep coming and join us as we go along we just have to feel blessed of baba's love of bringing his love in so many different ways to us and we all are learning and growing in the process it is not that the, we are all living these realities to the t that day will be aham brahmasmi <laughs> i am god state right now we all are work in progress to do our little best to please baba by just imprinting this and then hoping that his love will hold our finger and make us walk the path to live them it is like when we are young and we are trying to walk from we are trying to crawl then we are trying to walk and we fall down several times but we don't give up the thought to walk and our parents are there to hand hold that little finger or the index finger balance us as our knees wobble until our knees and legs have the strength to take on the weight of the body and then we are on our own jumping and doing monkey business after that because we've got all the control and baba is that eternal parent he is holding us every moment and all the good and the bad and everything and what i feel and at this i do as well taking from don steven's story when baba had told him that i know everything yes but i still want you to tell me everything and from that day till he left don steven's every night told baba whatever that he wanted to tell him the good the bad the ugly and taking a leaf from that story I started talking and in the night early morning whenever I'm sleeping I release and I tell baba everything that I felt or experienced or something if that has displeased him because I felt this hurt or if I felt why did this person do this or do that 
anything or just plain jain talk of all that happened of somebody who irritated me of that bank person who really pushed my buttons or the mobile phone company person who never understood after my three calls anything and i think talking to baba before you go to sleep will help you do the same so try it and just tell baba i'm judging myself and if baba is inside me then i'm judging baba okay and just give it to him that you give me the strength to imprint this you give me the strength of whatever needs to be done out of this and just tell him all your fears and everything and just plunk it into his basket of love or into his ocean of love and just every day i imagine and visualize as many a times that i'm on this huge beach and that ocean meher baba is written all over and it's like a collage of baba's faces and all my favorite pictures of baba are in the ocean and i'm just going and you know splashing my feet in it and going right there till i'm almost till the chest maybe or till my waist the waters are there and then i'm just telling okay baba now i'm dipping into your ocean of love now wash away everything that that is the least intensity of you and that least intensity of you is also as baba has given that bad is not actually bad bad is the least intensity of good and that also is for our learning that's also a part of our sanskaras which we have brought forward so holding you tight in his love and i'm sure his love will melt away all the fear and anything else that is trying to engulf you or block you from taking baba in more and more thank you for the share lenita thank you thank you thank you rashan jay baba jay baba jeff vandana armaiti aunty gail anyone marjipan anyone would like to share something yes vandana i have a small experience with baba which i'd like to share and uh, it's just a reflection of him telling me that he is there with me every day um so i'm the last of four siblings five siblings actually and i'm the spoiled one for for choice and how i can't even begin that again you guys to tell you that so uh, i've lost my pet but just and i was really spoiled by my dad but uh, now that i found baba i see baba as my father and i was very friendly with my father so all complaints everything i just come and share with baba so i've been going through my own um, cleansing and churning of life um, and i enjoy it now earlier i used to trip a lot but now i enjoy it because i know it's only bringing me closer and closer to baba <laughs> and this is one such experience where you know i was cribbing to baba like every single day about everything i used to crib to him that you have no idea what i'm going to do right i mean what i'm going to only i know you absolutely have no idea you have no comprehension of oh, what you are going to do you're only smiling across everything whenever i come and complain to you and i just every little thing like in the day i don't know maybe 50 times and but i'm only complaining to him in my mind yeah outside i'm this very sorted and intelligent and very very uh, versatile uh, well conducted person but inside i know i'm complaining to my master and baba appears in uh, one of my platforms in the house which is the beginning of my house and where all products are kept so it that comes into the house is kept there and sprayed and kept there and i realized that baba's uh, uh, face is impression has come on one of the platforms so clearly i can see two eyes with mustache and smiling away so for me that was an indication to say that he is there in the beginning of everything in my life yeah everything that starts because that's the beginning of my house so i just tell that he's trying to tell me and then listen i'm there from where it all started um then in my toilet you know in my toilet the the door the bottom end of the door there's a oh, so vivid impression of baba i mean such a vivid impression of baba i can't even begin to explain and really that impression is being formed by the shadow of the nails which are there on the door yeah a nail which is protruding out from a fitting in the door 
and you can clearly see Baba's image in that. And uh, that's in the toilet, like for him's sake, it's toilet, you know. So for me, that, that's an impression that in the worst of your life, I am there with you. And that just helps me realize that, you know, when Baba says that, I hope I'm saying this the way Baba, I mean, the way Baba has quoted, uh, I, am, uh, I am closer to you even than your own breath. And he means it. Uh, he really means it because, you know, otherwise, why would he be, why would he want to tell me a message like, I'm there with you from the beginning since eternity and I'm there with you even in the filth, like even in the dirt of your life, I am there with you. So don't think I am not there with you. I'm there with you everywhere. Even in places that you can't imagine, I am there with you. Uh, so for me, um, this was a huge reassurance that through my struggle or through my imperfections or through this journey where I'm getting closer to realization, closer to understanding the true value of life or creating value back into the society, my master is there with me, you know. And one of the things that has been most encouraging for me through this uh, so-called imaginary turmoil of mine is that whenever I feel defeated, I just um, uh, I just listen to the song I walk with the king. So whenever I listen to that song, I feel you know what is there to fear? There is absolutely nothing to worry. Even if he is scaling my skin, I'm walking with the king. There's absolutely nothing to worry. Sure enough, I have to go through my troubles and I have to go through my turmoils, but um, nothing really matters because I'm walking with the king and he's holding my hand through it all. And probably he's suffering and struggling as much as I am. The only thing is I don't realize it. But every step of the way he's making me realize it, that I am with you through it all. So I just thought that's a very empowering feeling and that's why I'm sharing it with everyone to say that Baba is there with us. Like I said, he really means it when he says, I'm closer to you than even your own breath. He really means that. Like he's the dude is serious about that. So yeah, thank you. I, I just thought that this, this was meant to be shared. So I'm just sharing this. I was wanting to share this term, but I've been missing the... Uh, Satsang for a long time now, but yeah, probably wanted it at this time. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, Vandana. Be thank you. Before we move ahead, I want to again ask everyone one more thing about our sessions. Uh, so from March, as we know, the EST timings are going to be changing uh, with the R laps again. And uh, from mid-March, Satsang timings also will change. I wanted to ask you all if uh, for the... East EST, the time will remain the same. But instead of Sundays, if we can do Saturdays from the first week of March, then would that be okay with all of you? If we can shift our meditation to Saturday morning, uh, your time. It will be the same time for you all, but only instead of Sunday, can we shift it to Saturday so that then I can have the meditation and the East-West satsang back-to-back as a Saturday slot. Uh, kind of a thing. Uh, may I get your thumbs up if it is uh, okay or you can... Jeff, Sanover, I can make Dave. it. I can make it. You can make it? No, but I cannot, but do what's best for the majority of the group and yourself. Oh, okay. I would, I, I would hate to see you go. <laughs> what time what, what, what time would you start? Same time. Set? Same time, 7.30 a.m., same time for you. Your time will not change. The time for the Indians will change. So right now for uh, next Saturday, it will be same time, 6 p.m. on Sunday, 7.30 a.m. your time. From 6th March, I was asking if it can be 7.30 a.m. on Saturdays for you all. For Indians, it will be 6 p.m. on Saturday evening. But after 15th March, for Indians, it will turn to be 5 p.m. on Saturday. But for all of you, it will still remain 7.30 a.m. EST. We will be uh, compromising the one hour with the EST timing. So Indian timings will change. But for all of you, it will remain 7.30 a.m. all throughout. Only the day I wanted to request if we can do Saturday instead of Sunday. Uh, make it on Saturday if that's best for yourself and everybody. I can make part of that 
but I can't go through the whole thing, and sometimes I won't be able to make it, but I'll do my best to, to come as long of those sessions as I can. Thank you so much. Yeah, Thank you so much. Of course. Thank you so much, everyone. So uh, can I just get the reaction? Yes, I can see all the thumbs up and we know that the majority is going to be there. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Gail, would you be uh, there as well? Yes, Are you yes, I'll be there. Thank you. Thank you so much. I have to work yeah. next oh. Saturday, but I think I can just about get home in time for 12.30. I finish it just gone 12. Okay. All right. So yours will remain 7.30 to 9 a.m. time for the EST zone. Are you thinking of putting it back to Sundays when the time situation changes or are you going to keep it this way just for practical purposes? For practical purposes, because the thing is, I do have uh, weekend seminars and workshops that I take. So right now, I'm neither able to do on Saturday or on Sunday because both evenings are taken. So if at all, I can block my whole evening of Saturday for Baba's work, then I have the Sunday free to allocate my other webinars and uh, things like that. Sure. So that's why I was requesting if it can be done. Then my Saturday becomes my Baba day right from, uh, you know, five in the evening, my time onwards till late night, uh, it'll be dedicated to Baba. And then Sunday, I can plonk anything else that is coming along. Roshani, yes. when, this is going to, when this new day is going to start? From 6th of March. So 28th February, which is next Sunday, which is, it will be the last Sunday of 6 p.m. And if you all say, yes, I will talk to Angela and then get it changed and the meditation will become every Saturday, same time from 6th of March, Saturday. 6th of March? 6th of March. Right. Yes. So 6th of March, Saturday, if you all can write down and block your time so that you can put your alarms And I will pray to Baba that Jeff can make it as well for all the sessions. And all of you can make it. Jeff, would you like to share anything today? Sure. Everything that you have said and Vandana has said, very important. <clears throat> the chakras are already there, Lanita. Those chakras are there mm -hmm. in us. And what I understand and experience is what Roshani is doing is helping us to activate those chakras. And I understand without understanding, you know, your concerns, your, your feelings. So this is a thought, and I do this myself, rather at this point than doing the intense focus on the chakras as we're guided with the colors and the affirmations. I, I would sense that you breathe in the love of Baba and you breathe out the love of Baba as you're doing your own prayers and meditation sometimes. I, and I also love what Roshani ex shared. It's about visualizations. When she spoke about visualizing the ocean of love with Baba and all the many pictures she has of Baba, and there she is floating in Baba's ocean of love with all those pictures around her and letting those pictures and her being in the ocean just float into Baba's love and the ocean of Baba's love float into her. Sort of however you may synthesize that, breathing in the, the love of Baba, breathing out the love of Baba, maybe being in the ocean and breathing in the love of Baba and out visualizing his many pictures or just one picture of him. That also, I believe, I can't speak with any authority, but that also activates those chakras. They're there. They're just in time allowed by what we do with prayer affirmation. We're very focusing to become activated. So without any pressure, 
just go with the flow. And I love what Roshani is saying. Talk with Baba. Baba, what, just pour your heart out and say, you know, I'm going through this and I ask your help. Please help me, Baba. Uh, we all have a beautiful picture of Baba. You can look into his eyes and let his eyes look back to you. It's so beautiful to look into his eyes, but then let his eyes look back to you and in some way speak. And the most important thing is relax about all of this. It'll all happen in its perfect time. And once again, for me, and it might work for you, is just the meditation. I just breathe in Baba's love. And I breathe out Baba's love. And I breathe in Baba's love. And I breathe out Baba's love. And that goes through the whole being. It's so beautiful. But no buts. I, I, I can really appreciate your strong feelings. And just let this evolve slowly. And have wonderful conversations with Baba. It's one of the most beautiful things we can do. You, you know, hey, he's our constant companion, one of our, our best friend. So that's maybe maybe helpful. I, I hope it is a little bit. That was beautiful, Jeff. Thank you so much. Thank you. Is there anyone who would like to do a quick share? Mona, your hand is up. Yeah, hi. I just wanted to say it was so beautiful. Today's experience is a meditation and connecting with Baba and uh, it, just being in his love and his presence. And thank you so much guiding us through it and always being this beacon of light and spreading his love and light and getting us reconnected to him all the time even though i feel his presence and he's so blessed but it's like so amazingly powerful and beautiful and i think it was the most restful uh, space to be in and expansiveness thank you and uh, i did want to know um, you mentioned some workbook in the beginning of this thing uh yeah i want to know a little bit more but yeah that's so it. the ones who had done the first set uh, of seven realities meditation the entire longer version uh mm -hmm. i had uh, with baba's love created this workbook which was sent to them to work on every day with the seven realities okay yes okay. i would love to have it if it's okay sure um, sure thank you so uh you come for one or two sundays so that you get seeped in into it and then you will know better uh, of the working with the workbook and i will send it to all the ones who are newly joined please uh, message me or email ids i will add it to the mailing list and the seven realities group as well and then once you're coming for a few Sundays, then the workbook will be more helpful to, you know, kind of put it into your daily schedule and we'll be happy to send it. Yes, sure. So we have a few minutes. Would you all like to do that chant of uh, just letting go of all that needs to go and inhaling Baba's love in it? Yeah. Okay. So we'll do the prana apana. Uh, Jab. So prana is the life force energy, the breathing in of prana and apana is its opposite. It deals with all the excretionary aspects of our body, physiological and energetic, and thereby releasing all that is unserving, that which has served its purpose, that which is the least intensity of Baba may all go while we chant this. Okay. So it goes as prana, apana, sushumna, hari. Hari Meher, Hari Meher, Hari Meher, Hari. Okay. So, you all can just, we'll chant it nine times quickly. Jai Baba. Prana Pana Sushumna Hari Hari Meher 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 H
हरि मेहर हरि मेहर हरि मेहर हरि प्राणा पाना सुषुम्ना हरि हरि मेहर हरि मेहर हरि मेहर हरि प्राणा पाना सुषुम्ना हरि हरि मेहर हरि मेहर हरि मेहर हरि प्राणा पाना सुषुम्ना हरि हरि मेहर हरि मेहर हरि मेहर हरि प्राणा सुषुम्ना हरि हरि मेहर हरि मेहर हरि मेहर हरि पाना पाना सुषुम्ना हरि हरि मेहर हरि मेहर हरि मेहर हरि प्राणा पाना सुषुम्ना हरि हरि मेहर हरि मेहर हरि मेहर हरि प्राणा पाना सुषुम्ना हरि हरि मेहर हरि मेहर हरि मेहर हरि अवतार मेहर बाबा की जय अवतार मेहर बाबा की जय अवतार मेहर बाबा की जय थैंक यू एवरी वन फॉर बींग देर एंड सी यू नेक्स्ट संडे एट सिक्स पी एम आई एस टी सेवन थर्टी ए एम आई एस टी एंड आफ्टर दैट आर टाइमिंग विल रिमेन द सेम बट आर डे विल बी चेंज टू सैटरडेज फॉर सेवन रियालिटीज मेडिटेशन वील कीप यू पोस्टेड Thank you so much, everyone, and happy Arti with Cassandra and Baba and all of us. Jai Meher Baba. Thank you so much for your sharing this space of love with Baba. Thank you. Jai Meher Baba. We'll begin silence now. Thank you, Bhushan.